You are watching Germantown Municipal Television, your source for everything Germantown. Hello and welcome to Law Talk on Germantown Municipal Television. My name is Vincent Perryman and I am a local attorney with the Law Offices of J. Vincent Perryman. Each month Law Talk focuses on a wide range of legal issues and topics. Today's show will talk about new laws that have taken effect during the summer of 2015 and how they'll affect you, the viewer. With us now is attorney Bill Jones of the Jones Law Firm. Bill, thanks for being with us again and as we start this new uh, season of Law Talk, I think it's appropriate to send our condolences out to the family of Zeke Logan as uh, he was, I guess, some of the impetus as to why you and I have the relationship we do and do Absolutely. as much. Uh, yeah, he was, uh, yeah, you know, he, nine years ago he put me on his little radio show and they dubbed me Lawyer Bill and that brought you and me in contact with each other and uh, our, our sincere heartfelt condolences go out to uh, to his family who uh, I know is still struggling with it he was a he was a great man mm -hmm. and uh, w with that said it's one of these things that this week uh, yesterday in court I was reminded as to why I became an attorney as I uh, took a uh, pretty big risk and stand against uh, a big bank that was taking advantage of a 95 year old woman and uh, with that said uh, in July, we had a lot of laws that went into effect, and uh, you know it's a big, thick stack of them. And uh, what we're trying to do today is is to educate the viewers on what new laws might come into contact with them. Kind of focusing on the uh, family law aspect. Sure. Um, and uh, where would you like to begin? Well, I guess it's smart to to start by kind of letting the viewer know why why the law changes and, and why July is kind of kind of the litmus test for when these laws go into into effect for you and I. Um, every year the law the law changes. It has to um, because it's imperfect. Mm -hmm. There are always advances in technology, there are advances in our on our morals and uh, and what is condoned in the society and what is not. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the law struggles to keep up and change with that and it's generally behind it's generally a year or two behind what what is going on in the, in the public's eyes uh, but they try and make changes and modifications so that the general public is not hearing a verdict from a judge and saying I don't understand why you've rendered this verdict it, it makes no sense mm -hmm. and with that um, the House enacts certain bills and, and you've got to have a time where we start everything and mm -hmm. July 1st is generally the time when, when all these bills kind of go into, into effect. Some of them open the floodgates and we can relook at any old case that this would affect mm -hmm. and, but most of them are from this point forward. Um, most of them are from this day forward this new law uh, will take effect. Um, one of the things that changes about every two years is if if you've got children and you've been married and you're divorced, uh, parenting plans always come out every year. Mm -hmm. um, they, they'll make little changes to them. We've, we've actually had changes 2012, 2014, and now 2015. The 2014 change uh, it, it was small, it was mm -hmm. minute. Uh, they said that you can't leave um, with the children or if you're going to move with the children over 50 miles, it previously had said 100 miles, mm -hmm. that was the change in it. The new plan, the only change that, that I can discern in, in looking over it, is it used to delineate mother and father. Mm -hmm. um, and now, um, it's parent one and parent two. It's parent one and it's parent two. And that's, as you and I were talking before the show, it's gender neutral. Mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't specify mother and it doesn't specify father. There's a couple of reasons that that, that change is, has come up. One is 
uh, like we talked about, to be gender neutral, so as not to show prejudice for one sex or the other. Uh, the other reason is because of what the changes that you've seen coming out of the United States Supreme Court that um, have, have said that um, homosexual marriage is, is, is going to be legal in all 50 states and is legal in all 50 states. Well, with that, you're going to have same-sex couples doing adoptions mm -hmm. or having their own children. Um, uh, and with that, you can't have a plan that says mom and dad. It's going to have to say dad one and dad two or mom one and, and mom two. So they've, they've already changed that parenting plan so that it's, it's non-gender specific. And I think what's interesting with that, the impetus of us having that conversation earlier was that uh, a local divorce attorney had posted it on uh, social media, a photo of a, a news article about this and how Tennessee was in the news. And I was kind of surprised because I'm looking at all of these divorce attorneys that I know were proponents of same-sex marriage and they're well aware of the new Supreme Court ruling and they're thinking that, oh, well this is done because someone has taken offense with the word mom or the word dad as opposed to it's simply that the law in the country has changed so you've got to get a gender neutral form that will work for everyone, not just for uh, different sex couples. That's right. You know, and, and it was interesting that there was this long thread of attorneys talking about this and all this, but until I chimed in and after my conversation with you, because honestly I was like, well, why was this changed? And you're like, um, you remember that Supreme Court case? You know, and I'm like, <laughs> hey, let's uh, point this out to everybody else because, you know, it's hard to track all of the law changes. It is. It's, it's when, when you and I first started talking about doing the show and looking at it, I, I wasn't aware of all the changes there. I just keep up with my own field. Mm -hmm. there, there are just so many. Um, that's why we thought it would be a good idea to do this. You and I can't keep up with all the changes. Right. Uh, we try and just keep up with our own fields. And, and that's always why with attorneys, a lot of times it's the answer you get is, it depends, or I need to look that up to make sure that there hasn't been any changes in the law um, because otherwise you're gonna, if you go into court thinking the law is what you remembered it to be versus right. looking at it, you're gonna have a problem. Absolutely. You know, and that's our goal is, is if people are educated about this, then they're able to go to their attorney and say, hey, I heard that this law had changed, and then maybe that attorney will make certain as to how that's being applied. Well, it also enables, enables you and I to keep client costs down, mm -hmm. um, because if if we're aware of what the law is, if we are, are up to date. And speaking of client costs, we've got to cut to a break for sure. a PSA. So when we return, we'll continue our discussion on the new laws of 2015. Please stay with us. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who wants to care of you. Right, mi cariño. So like I said, everything I learned about cooking, I learned from grandmas and bananas. Shall we go again? Yep. Mix the beef with the onions, the onions with the peppers, the peppers with the paprika, the paprika with the garlic, the garlic with the oregano, the oregano with the cumin. Got it? Got it. Throw in the olive, stir, season, stir again, pour out the flour, roll out the dough, make a circle, drop in a fistful of filling, fold over, press down, and ta-da! Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. You are watching Germantown Municipal Television, your source for everything Germantown. Welcome back. I'm Vince Perryman, and you're watching Law Talk. Joining us on our show today is attorney Bill Jones of the Jones Law Firm, and we're discussing new laws that have taken effect this year. 
Uh, Bill, before the break, we were explaining how the laws come into effect and that it's at the end of the fiscal year for the state that they generally come in um, to effect. So as far as in family law, what are some of the changes? So the one of the biggest, I guess we'll start with the grandiose changes that I think are you're going to start seeing the most mileage out of. Um, one of the changes was, and I'm going to look it up, uh, it was House Bill number SB0101. Um, and what that talks about is is child support. Child support is is one of those things that it's it's necessary um, to support children that you have. I mean that's kind of common sense. But what happens is is life occurs. Life occurs for individuals and they get behind on child support. They may uh, have sickness. They may uh, be temporarily out of work. Um, or they, they could just be a deadbeat father or mm -hmm. a deadbeat mother. Um, in any of those cases, just because you're sick and in the hospital, just because you're out of work for six months, it, it, that does not matter. Your, your child support number continues to be owed and due every month, and it has to be paid mm -hmm. because whoever's raising the child needs that to provide necessities, food, clothing, uh, school lunches, th those type of things. So when you're down and out and on your luck or if you're just a deadbeat, um, that child support number grows and, and it continues to grow and grow and grow. It actually grows uh, at 12 percent compounding interest mm -hmm. uh, per annum once, once, as you and I were talking uh, earlier, once it's adjudicated, uh, mm -hmm. once that number is, is put into effect. So it's possible for somebody to owe, let's say, $500 a month in, in ongoing child support and to owe a couple of hundred dollars, a hundred dollars uh, towards their arrearage, towards whatever they, they owe in the past. Mm -hmm. What this law says basically uh, is that parents can now um, come to a compromise or come to an agreement on what that arrearage should be. So for example, if, if my wife and I were to, to get divorced and I were to be out of work for a while and, and owe her $50,000 in back child support, we could theoretically now work out a deal that would say, instead of paying you just $100 here and there, I'll pay you a lump sum of ten thousand dollars and and we'll call it square. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple of reasons that that's important uh, to do. One is that being behind on your on your child support does many things. It it can terminate your driver's license. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks horrible on your credit. Uh, there are certain employers that that may look look down on you. Certainly if you're in the military um, your CO can can take drastic action against you if you've mm -hmm. fallen behind on your child support. So the ability to to come in and negotiate how you're going to pay off or pay down your arrearage and come to some type of a settlement, it, it's pretty huge. Mm -hmm. um, and it can be life-changing for certain individuals. Because um, they can also pull your passport, which creates a huge problem if you are active military. Absolutely. I mean, it, and it, with that type of interest compounding, it's a vicious cycle where I've seen it so many times, because child support goes back to the date of birth. Mm -hmm. So I've seen it down in juvenile court several times where, where an arrearage order is put in place. Maybe this, no one ever went to juvenile court and got an order for support until the child's eight or nine. Mm -hmm. And finally, one day, somebody says, well, this informal handshake agreement that dad and I have worked out isn't working anymore. I want to go to court and actually get an order saying that he owes me. And at that point, that magistrate or that judge will look back to the date of birth and say, all right, you owe X amount of dollars from the date that the child is born. And right then, from that point forward, you've, we've put that father or that mother in a situation where, for the rest of their life, probably, they're going to owe child support arrearage. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and, and what this does is it allows the parents in certain situations to give to give the other party a break. Um, yeah. I, I'm a little surprised that it's come about the way that it has. The reason you couldn't negotiate these things, period, uh, was because it used to be something that that in a different era, in a different time, uh, I'm talking 50s, 60s, you, you would have men as the primary bread earners in a household, and they would basically threaten or uh, economically threaten or physically threaten their, their spouse to take X amount of child support dollars or else. Mm -hmm. And the way that the legislator dealt with that is they enacted laws that said you can't negotiate child support or rearage. You, it is what it is, there's no getting around it, and you're stuck with it. Um, and, and what they've done is they've, they've kind of turned that on its head and said maybe being that firm on, on everything is actually putting people in a worse off situation. Well, and I, I think part of the impetus of this change is, you know, in this last minute that we've got here, is that your ability to co-parent goes down exponentially once you have litigation involved. Now a lot of these cases are 4D cases in sure. juvenile court where the state brings the petition and it's because the child's on 10 care or something like that so the state is the one entitled to the child support and you have two parents that have successfully, and I've seen this, successfully co-parented that child for 17 years and suddenly they're in court and they're each thinking the other one has hauled them in here and then it just Breaks blows down. up, yeah. Um, so this gives us an opportunity to be able to sit down and get everybody in agreement. And I think as we wrap this up on this topic, the most important part is if you are going to try to enter in one of these agreements, you need an attorney's help to That's make right. sure that it's done correctly. Because you got to get the court to bless it. You may have to get the state to bless it. And if you miss one of those things, then you're out your lump sum and you're still owe all this money. Yeah, this isn't you and I shake hands and we say it's done. This is something that needs to be formalized, written up, taken before a judge and signed. This is not we text each other, hey, why don't you let me off of what I owe you? Okay, yeah. we're good to go. It, it has to be done very formally. And we'll get further into some of this once we return from our break. Uh, please stay with us. This new mom is struggling to get the skates just right. And now she's holding on for dear life. Her kids can see she may have broke her knees. They still love her though she looks like she's attacked by killer bees. I'm allergic. You don't, you don't have to be perfect to be the perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. So who's gonna do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect, that's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. We couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. are watching Germantown Municipal Television, your source for everything Germantown. Welcome back. With us now is Attorney Bill Jones. We're talking about new laws in 2015. Bill, in the last segment, we really got focused in on the new change where you can put in an agreement as to forgiving arrears and child support if all the parties and the court blesses it. Right. Now, I think that also brings us into the issue of before, if you were in uh, behind on child support, they'd go in and revoke your driver's license, and you could not get your license back until you had made some sort of payment. Now there's a law that went into effect that allows you to get a restrictive driver's license, much like if you had been first offense a DUI and needed a restricted license to get to and from work. Right. Uh, I mean, it, it kind of it kind of makes sense, it, like you're talking about if you've got a DUI. One of the punishments for, 
for driving under the influence of, of a drug or alcohol is that we, we pull your license. Well, for most people living in a, in a suburb area, if you take away their license, you, you're taking away their ability to earn income. Um, well, it's the same thing with child support. That's one of the, one of the punishments. I mean, they'll, they'll pull your, your tax return and give it to the other spouse. Like you talked about, they may decline your passport, but the big one that everybody hears uh, is they'll pull your license, and they do regularly. Mm -hmm. um, so when that happens, if you think about it, what we're doing is we're saying, you have not paid child support, so we're going to take away your license, so we're going to take away your ability to go out and have meaningful employment and catch up on your mm -hmm. child support. Um, the you know, there, there are arguments to the contrary. Well, you can take a bus. Well, you can find somebody close. It's a chicken or the egg situation. That's right. It, it, it really is. And what, what, H, what House Bill 1396 uh, does is allows somebody that is not in compliance with their child support, that is not paid their ongoing and, and is accruing this, this massive interest that we've talked about, and they can't work out a deal with their spouse or with their former spouse, uh, it allows them to go in and make application. Now, this is not a, it doesn't say they, they shall receive mm -hmm. a restrictive license. Um, it says they may. That means it, this is, again, is something that you probably need to hire an attorney on uh, so they can go in and make a good faith argument and, and attempt to help you mm -hmm. get this license because what that would do is, is again, allow you to have a license that would, it's pretty restrictive. Um, mm -hmm. It'll say you can drive down this street on these days during these hours. And that keeps you, that way the cops know if we pull you over and you're not on this street or it's 12 o'clock and you're heading to the club, mm -hmm. we can pull you over and, and, and haul you in for driving on a revoked license. Mm -hmm. um, so it's gonna be very helpful though for those that have, are just in a hard spot not the deadbeat fathers and mothers, just those that are truly in a hard spot and truly need a little help. Right. And what other uh, law changes are there that we need to cover? The other, the other big <clears throat> one um, is um, your retirement accounts, your 401ks, your IRAs, your stocks, your bonds. So in a, in a, div in a normal divorce setting, um, the way that the law was, what we do is we look at let's say that you worked at Federal Express for 30 years and you were married for, for uh, 10 years. Mm -hmm. So um, when you go to, to divorce, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at your retirement account and we're gonna say, well, your spouse and you were only married for 10 years, but you've been building that retirement account for 30 years. Um, so your spouse is entitled to, to half of that one-third of that 10 years mm -hmm. um, and, and that's that's how we were taught that's what we've always done is we look at the period that you were married and we divide it right down the middle and and we're good to go and and we sail on well what what the argument that's been made and what the the change that's been made is we've oversimplified that and we've we've hurt some of the individuals that that were accruing their retirement prior to. So what, and this one is, I don't have it in front of me. Uh, this is House Bill, let me see. I think it's two, uh, number 202 on our sheet, and I think it's Senate Bill uh, SB 0161. Uh, yeah. Divorce, annulment, and alimony. Yeah, so basically what it does is it says um, what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the amount of actual monies that were put into this account during the length of the marriage. So, for example, if in our example, to carry it forward, if I'm adding to my retirement for 20 years, um, naturally, the principal in my account is going to be earning interest. And what we've said now is the interest or the increase or decrease that occurred prior to the marriage is no longer divisible. 
Now, the bad news is for, for folks like me uh, who, who uh, did not excel at mathematics, mm -hmm. we're going to need an accountant or we're going to need a program or a calculator, something to figure out this is what was in your account, this is what the, the, uh, the valuation was, this is what your interest rate is. So this much of the, that 20 years, your principal amount is 100,000 and with interest it's actually 123. So 123 is what we don't touch and we just divide the remainder. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be very complex mm -hmm. um, and, and I think you're only gonna see it applied in cases where there's a substantial amount of retirement that was accrued prior to the case. I, I think in, in short-term marriages where you're, you're still just gonna see uh, practitioners just dividing it mm -hmm. because of the cost involved of having an accountant or someone tell us what the valuation, what the valuation is. Yeah, and, and I think really on the valuation thing, what will happen is Vanguard and companies like that may be able to already have that calculation for you. There's going to have to be something. There's yeah. going to have to be some uh, computer or app or calculator or something that, that, that allows you to go in and, and do some type of amortization schedule and figure it out. Yeah, and I, as we wrap up here in our last minute, I think what's important for the viewers to take with them is, is there are these law changes out there and you know you can go search new laws in Tennessee 2015 and come up with the abstract that's provided and everything. But you're always going to need, especially with the new laws, my opinion is you're going to need an attorney to look at it because there's not going to be case law behind it. It's going to be legislative intent if you've got to argue about it in court. That's right. And that's where And you need an attorney. Money. You need an attorney. Just like you're saying, this is one of those things where I, I worry about this show of, of people going out and saying, well, I heard, I heard that we can just settle our child support, so let's just do it. Mm -hmm. You need to speak with an attorney before you make these decisions. And that's a perfect spot to wrap up. That's our time is up for this edition of Law Talk. We'd like to thank our guest for taking time out of his busy schedule and being with us and sharing his thoughts and insights. If you'd like more information about Law Talk or any other program on Germantown Municipal Television, please refer to our website at www.gmtvonline.org. Thank you for joining us today and be sure to join us next month for more discussion on legal topics. Until then, I'm Vince Perryman and thank you for watching.